Y'all ever follow like 60s dance crazes? Uh, I mean, I know how to pony. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> There's a, they used to put them out all the time. It's like, uh, sometimes they put it as like a B-side of a record. It's like, okay, this is the dance you do with this record. But I, I think that there's still room for that. Maybe something involving some dinosaurs. I was working on this T-Rex dance. I'm not trying to write it. I'm trying to find out what it is, if that makes sense. Wait, so one thing, one thing you made One thing about T-Rex that people don't understand. It's like, you know, this is kind of the standard like T-Rex thing. The thing is that this is not actually correct. So the T-Rex is actually more like this. But when you do that, people don't know what you, it looks like finger guns. Hey guys, it's me, LV in the Life, here on LVU. And we are sitting with the tap dancer, Siobhan. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. And this is Lena. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Can you tell us how you started tap dancing or when you started? Uh, where are you from? I'm from Austin, Texas. So this is my hometown. And um, I started dancing because my parents co founded Tapestry. And uh, wow. so been dancing my entire life so I that's really cool been professionally performing for about 12 years so mm -hmm. so I was about 19 years old uh, Siobhan when you were dancing here in Austin um, was there anything that you like particularly wish that there was more of for tap dancers or maybe um, that you thought was very supportive like just kind of give us a little bit more about like how Austin has helped or not has has not helped? I think that I like to speak generally for all dance because dance is so important for self-expression and for for your mind, your body, and your spirit, and your emotions. And I feel like some dance studios aren't supported enough in having proper flooring and proper mm, you know, yeah. surfaces for us to be able to refine our craft on. And you know, we're grateful over at Tapestry that we just got some amazing floors in that will protect the bodies of dancers and I think that's really important for longevity and expression because there are a lot of studios right now that will roll out some marley over some concrete and be like alright dance seven hours a day. Yeah isn't and, that nice? Yeah and they're like oh we're just human beings that have bones. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice if I could have those bones in ten years you know. We're sitting with a filmmaker slash actor and his name is Brian Elder. Hi, how are you guys doing? Awesome. Tell us a little bit about where you're from and um, what you do here in Austin as a filmmaker and actor. So I'm, I'm originally from Virginia. I moved here seven years ago. Um, and I'm an actor, filmmaker, director, and I do screenwriting as well. So, and, but I'll do anything on set. If someone's like, you need, I need a PA, I'm like, all right, I'm there. Let's do it. So, oh, really? Yeah, no. I just love being on set. How long so, have you been doing it? Um, about, about eight years. Oh really? So yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Very. Yeah. I started off in the music business, so okay. I have a background in that, and I, I fell over to the to film stuff, and absolutely love it. So, the thing I love about Austin is it's a it's a very tight community. Everybody's very community, and I mean everyone's very you know out to help each other basically. Yeah. It's not like you know like L.A. like we're talking about where mm -hmm. where everybody's just, out yeah, for their self. Yeah, it's only like cutthroat and stuff out there. Yeah. Stuff. So, I love that Austin's very community based. As far as like any of the entertainment business, everyone's trying to help each other, and it's just that's very it's a very powerful thing. Um, the things that I don't like about Austin, it, it is not I don't I don't dislike anything about Austin, <laughs> but the thing I don't um, that bothers me about Austin is is our incentives. They took them away for a few years. When I first moved here, our incentives were like ninety five million, I think it was, or something. Yeah. Like seven years ago, and they took them away. Yep. But now they're bringing them back. Yeah. So I'm our, very thankful for that. In our last episode, we had an actor, David Allen Barrera. He's more of a theater actor, director, and he said the same thing, exactly the same thing. He's like, you know, I moved to Austin because of the incentives, and now they're being cut. And yeah. then, and it's just kind of, it's just such a hard like. I don't know. It's it's such a struggle for an artist, and I think it's so important to have those incentives. So I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, when you don't have them, people ship out to other places. Yeah. And so then Atlanta gets more work. New Orleans gets more work. Now New Mexico gets more work. That's no, awesome. Thank you for having me here. Yeah. 
We are here with an awesome musician, Andrew McLemore. Yes. <laughs> Got it right. How's it going? Good, thanks. Great, awesome. So when did you start music or like what got you into music? Well, I, I fell in love with music probably, well not probably, I fell in love with music as a junior in high school. I'd been playing saxophone in school for a long time, playing the same hot cross buns kind of stuff that everyone else does and not being really into it. Well, I bought my first album, which was John Coltrane's Blue Train. And uh, in the second half of the, of the melody, after it goes ba da ba doo da uh, the horns come in and it harmonizes it. ba da ba doo da and the other horns harmonize with it, and uh, with the tenor sax. And uh, yeah, I, I had to do music from then on. So I've been doing it since high school, and then I had a kind of a uh, prolonged sabbatical, no. I guess, in journalism for five years before I found my way Well, back is it because you later. thought that maybe you couldn't actually do it as a living, or what? Uh, I would say I got pretty disenfranchised, uh, disenchanted maybe. Uh, mm. In college, I went to school for jazz at North Texas in Denton. Okay. And um, yeah, I mean, it sort of had like, I guess, like your prototypical negative art school experience. What went wrong? Uh, I mean, it was kind of a um, bigger fish in a smaller pond, I guess. Mm. There, were lot, there were a lot of other... Um, great musicians. Actually, North Texas has more saxophone majors than any other school in the world. It's the oldest jazz program in the world as well. Um, they started before anybody else. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's and okay. I saw some other people that went through that program that were incredibly gifted, did really, really well. They were six credits away from graduation. Someone offered them a tour and they got the hell out of there. Thank you for watching. We'll be back here on LV. You'd either have to make it very distinct from finger guns or make it like a weird hybrid of the T-Rex and finger guns, you know. And that's what I'm saying, like, I'm not there yet. Show some respect, you know, for, for the material, you know. It's like, uh, let, it, let it reveal itself. Is there a song to this little the dance? Same, same thing with that. It's got to it's gotta be, you know. So have you actually been working on this? Or are you working on it now? Or has it been working on me? I don't know. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see.